A man panted as he frantically ran down a gray concrete hallway. The thought of what was pursuing him made his brow drench in sweat and his heart raced. The armor he wore actually helped him run and didn't weigh that much. He eventually turned a corner into a hallway lined with support columns. The floor was composed of dark gray tiles, giving the hall a foreboding look. He heard footsteps, and seeing no other option, he hid behind one of the columns. The footsteps slowly approached, and he slowly peeked around the corner. The man's armor was black and had slightly glowing yellow lines on its fingers, legs, and arms. The visor of his helmet was a faintly glowing yellow line. The fleeing man looked over and saw a friend of his, Frank, hiding behind a pillar. Frank also had armor, but he was missing his helmet. His armor was also black but with red lines, and a similar pattern to the man's own. His expression was a mix of anger and terror, much like the man felt at that time. Frank held in his right hand a sword with glowing red energy edges as he looked around the corner. As he did, repetitive impacts on the ground rang out as a source of two men's dread got closer. Frank got behind his cover and took a deep breath. The footsteps drew closer and slow down. The man looked at Frank. Even though Frank couldn't see his eyes, the two of them looked to each other. The shadow of their foe appeared on the cold floor. From his hiding place, Frank let out a war yell and charged the source of the footsteps, yelling. He held his blade high and his face was twisted in a rage. The man peered around the corner and caught sight of their foe man's eyes fell upon a tall figure with black hair pulled into a ponytail. The tall figure was known as Darren Nightshade, but he went by the name of Shade. A chill ran down the man's spine as he looked into Shade's eyes. His eyes was unnatural eyes. The glare of each were black. Irises white. His pupils were black, making them look like the eyes of a specter or a demon. Shade quickly thrust his arms at Frank, and a high beam of energy shot from his palm. Frank rolled to the side, and the beam overshot him. He then continued his charge at Shade. The man was about to jump and help Frank when Shade quickly drew a pair of black-bladed sides. He quickly parried a swing by Frank's sword. The loud clang of metal and energy rang out. Frank yelled as Shade used his other side and drove it into Frank's neck. Shade then hit him in the chest with his palm, and there was a black energy explosion. Frank screamed as he rolled away, and his life left him before he hit the ground. Come at me, or die by my hand. Shade yelled as the man started to run towards an exit. As he did, he threw out his hand and a bolt of blue energy flew out at Shade. The man felt like time had slowed down as he ran. Shade raised his arms and a black energy shield formed around that blocked the bolt. The bolt the man fired was able to distract Shade just long enough for the man to escape. Forty years later. An 11-year-old boy was sitting on a chair in the middle of a small house. Heck, it was more of a large hut but with concrete walls. A typical house in that poor area. His dark brown hair dripped with sweat in the Nicaraguan heat. It was one of the few safe places in the world. Most of it had been darkened, overrun with monsters. As the boy thought of all the darkness and despair, he heard his one-year-old stepsister playing happily with a small rubber ball. That sight brought a smile to his face. It also brought hope that all was not bad. The boy's stepmom was currently busy making dinner in the small kitchen. The smells of herbs and spices ran through the house as his dad and his dad's best friend entered the hut. 
Both the men were covered in perspiration, mainly because they spent most of the day working in the fields. It had been about four years since they had all been forced to go into hiding. The boy's name was Derek, and he hated the man who forced them into hiding more than anything. That and those freaky things that followed him. The only other person that had any problems was his dad's friend, Justin Sparks. Derek sighed and thought to himself, He's the one responsible for getting us into this. I need to find out why, especially now that he has a chance to tell me everything. I also need to find out what happened to my mom, my real mom. I have to be careful though. I'm not an expert, but he seems to be a bit unstable. I can't blame him though, after what happened two years ago, or was it three years ago? Four? I can't remember how long it has been, but that was just awful. He got up from the bed and walked into the small kitchen area where his father was. Dad, can I ask you something? His father wipes some sweat-covered black hair to the side. Derek also notices Dad's scar. It started from the right corner of his mouth and ended about an inch and a half below his right ear. It was a little under two inches long and moved as the older man spoke. Sure, Derek. Anything. This also concerns Mr. Sparks. Sparks' blue eyes flashed a bit of curiosity. He went by the nickname, Spark. His dad raised an eyebrow. How? I... I want to know how it came to this. How everything started from the very beginning. Derek's eyes held determination as he asked. I want to know how Spark got his abilities. How he gave them to you. What happened to my mother, how you met Ben, Megan, Theo, and Natalie? I want to know everything. Spark's eyes immediately took on a serious expression. You want to know everything? Yes, I really do. Spark, Derek's father, and his stepmother all looked at each other. They then walked into the next room and closed the door. Derek carefully put his ear next to it. After a second, he received an unpleasant shock. He jumps back out of reflex. Ouch! His dad snickered from behind the door, as did the others. So, they don't want me to know what's going on? He sighed, knowing he'd have to wait for them. It only took a few minutes for them to emerge, and his father was the first to speak. Okay, Derek. Spark and I will tell you everything. We agree that you are old enough and deserve to know. Excitement gathered in Derek's chest as his father continued. After dinner, we will tell you. You must make a promise, however. The story is long, so please only ask questions once we've finished, okay? Derek nodded. Sure, if it means I get to know what happened. Once they finished eating and his sister was put to bed, Derek, his stepmom, his dad, and Spark all sat in the small living room. The room was lit by candles, giving it a warm, cozy feeling. Spark was the one to start the tale.